Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at all of the healer specs and ranking them when it comes to raiding in Castle Natria. So if you've decided to become a healer or are continuing to be a healer, this should give you a pretty good idea of how each of the specs is performing currently on the beta. And since we're so late in the beta cycle, it's a pretty good indication of how each of the specs will be performing once the game goes live as well. They typically do some last minute tuning, but nothing major. So specs that are struggling when it comes to pure numbers might get bumped up or specs that are overpowered when it comes to just pure numbers might get bumped down. But in general, their play style is pretty set. Before we get started with today's video, I wanted to give a huge shout out to all the amazing people who support me on Patreon. And if you enjoy my content and would like to contribute, you can check the link to it in the description box um, and you can see all the perks that you would receive if you chose to support me. With that out of the way, I will hand the reins over to Shampi, who is our healing officer because I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to healing. And a big rule of mine is to not make videos on topics that I know absolutely nothing about. So he should give you a better idea of how each of the specs are doing. Hello, I'm Shampi. I play Disc Priest and I'm the healing officer for Big Dumb Guild. I am in charge of making our healer comp decisions and uh, basically breaking down a fight and making it um, easy for our raid to get through by keeping people's health bars full. So. Today I'm going to help out Hyper and tell you guys basically our thoughts about healers so far based off of all of our raid testing and theory crafting and, and just playing around with healers and, and testing what's good and what works, what doesn't work. I guess I'll just get right into the tier list. So in S tier, we have two healers. Uh, to no one's surprise, the first one is Disc Priest. Uh, Disc really didn't change that much coming from BFA. And going into Castle Nathria, it still has excellent damage. It's strong at what it was good at, which was frequent cooldowns, strong throughput. It has barrier, it has shields, it has all that. Um, it still has the weaknesses that it, it had in BFA, or at least the earlier parts of BFA, which is uh, it, it lacks quite a bit of single target healing. And it has slight mana problems, um, which, you know, those things aren't normally too relevant uh they don't bar it from being picked or even picked you know having two of them in your healing comp but being that this is the first tier of an expansion and healing is relatively at its weakest at this point in time single target healing is is generally pretty good you know tanks don't have as much agency over their health bars as they would at the end of an expansion so single target healing is at its strongest for this first tier and that makes it so that you may not run two disc priests but, uh, the, you know, it's still very, very good at what it has always been good at. One thing to note about Disc is it has a couple of good Covenant options. You can play Kyrian or you can play Venthyr. Um, Night Fae just doesn't have the numbers right now. Um, and Necrolord, unfortunately, with them capping it to uh, only proc atonement from one of the dots from the Necrolord Covenant, it's it's probably not going to be picked at all. But... Um, it has good Covenant options, it has good Conduits, it has pretty good Legendaries, uh, and it's overall just pretty strong. So the second healer in S tier is Resto Shaman. So this may be a surprise to some people, given how they didn't look too hot for the first like half to two-thirds of BFA, but Shaman has... It's, it's extremely versatile. Um, in that, you know, it's it's still good at doing raid healing, especially when stacked. It's um, just very, very strong at pressing chain heal and topping health bars. But now, with the introduction of covenants and legendaries and uh, baseline earth shield as well, which is pretty good, shamans are also very good at cleave healing. Um, they're in terms of single target, they're probably like third they're they're definitely middle of the pack not worst anymore um or or tied for worst with disc Priest. the versatility that i was speaking about you can you can opt for single target healing with uh the maldraxxus covenant or you can play vesper totem and just do more raid healing um you can pick your legendaries to augment that or or shore up any weaknesses 
one of the relevant things to note about shaman however is um a few of the those game systems and this is really true for i think pretty much every spec in the game is there's quite a lot of bugs on beta right now and i resto shaman is benefiting quite a bit from those bugs so we'll see when the expansion drops um how many of those bugs are addressed but as of right now um they may not even be bugs they may be like intended mechanics that just aren't explicitly stated but it's it is benefiting quite a bit from those bugs so um shaman could drop in relative power should those bugs be fixed it may lose a few uh, percentages off of its hps but um that that's it's one relevant thing to know but overall shaman is very very strong um this raid is looking like you can be stacked for pretty much all of it there there are some exceptions to that but uh it, there's it's definitely not old deer so now moving out of s tier and we're going to go into a tier there are three healers that i'm going to put in a tier but there's there's a big asterisk on this a tier is basically just a tier of they're not the best and they could move up or down based on tuning but as of right now these three healers are all generally pretty equal to one another. So uh, the first one that we're going to talk about, and this isn't necessarily in order, but but it's kind of in order. So the first one is Miss Weaver Monk. Um, that I that sounds like a hot take, but just hear me out for one second. So Monk has had quite a few struggles historically with not having a good raid cooldown. Revival's kind of doo-doo. Uh, they haven't had or filled a strong niche. They've been good at surviving. They have good defensives. They have good mobility. But that's never been like too relevant as a niche. Uh, but going into uh, Shadowlands, they've been given very very strong legendaries uh in fact i think monk has had the strongest legendary of any of the healers uh and that's the extend life legendary or tier of mourning and actually as of right now because of a bug on the beta that's not even the strongest but uh in in many testings that legendary was about a 15% increase to hps which is very large for a legendary um and because of that, it's made them exceptionally strong at single target healing and cleave healing. And those are two, uh, as, as I said earlier, with Disc Priest, those two things are very relevant in this tier, actually. There's a lot of mechanics that require strong single target healing and or strong cleave healing. And Monk just allows you to breeze through, through those mechanics. They're, it's very strong at, at healing. For example, like uh, like generals or artificer, or uh, e even the the houndmaster or uh, sludge fist. The tanks get hurt extremely hard. Tanks get banged on sludge fist. So monk fills that niche, and it, that niche is actually somewhat relevant in this tier. So one of the problems that monks have had, uh, and and I brought this up with shamans as well, is Monks have had by far the most bugs on beta, especially with their covenants. So monks being an A tier is, is definitely has an asterisk on it uh, because it's hard to know what's actually a bug and what's an intended mechanic. And should the expansion drop like this coming Tuesday, we would put monk at third just because in our testing and in our experience, even bugs accounted for monks have had a pretty strong niche and they've been dominant at doing exactly what they are good at which is single target and cleave healing um also raid healing they're they're fairly decent at it they have with covenants they have an extra raid cooldown um it's you know it's nothing like a tranquility or or you know uh, a tide or it it's not that strong uh, at healing multiple people at once but in terms of like a cooldown that increases your HPS like a wings or something. Uh, it, it has that in Yulon and it has that in its covenants. So uh, Monk has, has more cooldowns. It's got 
uh, not very good conduits, but very good legendaries, and it has a niche that it is now filling. So uh, things are looking okay for monks. Hopefully they just don't get the nerf bat that Blizzard traditionally likes to throw at them right before a tier. And next, moving into fourth-ish, we have Druid. So with the introduction of Covenants, Druids are quite capable at matching Disc Priest in terms of the frequency of their cooldowns, as well as uh, how strong their throughput is when they're uh, combining their cooldowns. So Druid obviously excels at rot style fights, but with the Covenants and Tree of Life and Flourish and uh, Night Fae, Druid is also quite, quite good at burst healing, should that be required. Uh, the issue is Druid is it isn't the best at single target, but it, it's just behind Monk. Uh, and they can augment that with uh, well, their mastery is quite good at that. And also they have they have various talent options and legendary options. So they're, they're pretty versatile at swapping between raid healing and, and single target healing and cleave healing. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it just doesn't eke out the, uh, the three healers that we've mentioned already in any of those categories. It's just very good at all of them, but not necessarily the best. Um, and right now that puts it at fourth. Again, with, with any amount of tuning or, or design changes, the Druid could move up or it could move down. Uh, the same is true with our next healer, which is Holy Paladin. So uh, if you enjoyed playing the Glimmer Paladin playstyle in Nihilotha or previous B of A tiers, first of all, I hate you. But second of all, that playstyle is very much dead now. Uh, Holy Paladin is by far the most changed healer going into Shadowlands. And unfortunately, it's falling fifth for us right now because it's just too weak from a numbers perspective. Uh, it still provides quite a lot of damage. It has valuable DR. It has insane utility. Uh, Devo is good. It's, it's better than in BFA, and Aura Mastery is still one of the strongest raid cooldowns. But from a numbers perspective, it just it it's just not really moving the meter very much. Uh, its single target healing is far worse than it was in BFA or previous expansions. Its raid healing is nearly abysmal, uh, and it, it's it's best legendary to give it a, a, some extra oomph in its HPS, uh, which is Marauds is, is actively does damage to you, which is a relevant weakness. And a healer, um, and it, it unfortunately the numbers just aren't there for it right now. Uh, again, its utility is still strong, but every healer has a, a break point where their utility just isn't enough of an argument to warrant doing sixty percent of what another healer could do. Um, that's not a hard number. That's just off the top of my head. Again, not a final placement of where Holy Pally w would end up because one tuning pass could just make it the clear favorite healer again if they got an aura buff. But as of right now, Holy Pally just is, is not impressing us too much. Uh, still, still relevant to have on your healing roster because, again, um, sometimes a bop just solves a fight for you uh, or a Devo is just a mandatory raid cooldown. But uh, as of right now, it's it just doesn't eke out any other healer. Um, except our B-tier healer, uh, which is Holy Priest. I know it looks doom and gloom for Paladin, but it, it, it comes in fifth over Holy Priest purely because Holy Priest... It's, it's in a sad state right now because it didn't really get anything going into Shadowlands. Uh, it, it just, it's falling further and further behind Disc Priest. Uh, it's it doesn't benefit really from covenants, which is a, a huge point, which I'll come back to in a second. Uh, it's its best legendary is a cloak that gives you a, a free onk, um, or a, you know you could pick another legendary which gives you some HPS, but it's just it's not as good as the HPS increase that another healer's legendaries would give them, um, and also the that onk. Uh, Cloak Legendary is from a world boss on Holy Priest, which is a, a huge kick in the face. Uh, Holy Priest doesn't really have insane conduits. They don't... Yeah, they just didn't really get a ton going into this next expansion. They, they kind of just press buttons and do healing. Uh, 
and they've just fallen behind other healers that have actually synergized or uh, gained something from having these new game systems. So uh, coming back to the, the Covenant issue, so three of the Priest Covenants do damage and then in some cases trigger healing. So uh, Kyrian, you do damage and then it heals someone and you, you know you press a few globals and at the end you do a big explosion that heals. For, for Disc Priest, each time you do damage with Ascended Blast, uh, that procs atonement, uh, which is you know a huge HPS increase, and the end explosion procs atonement as well. For Holy Priest, you're just you're you're basically only getting half the benefit that a disc priest would from the same button because disc double dips from those covenant abilities doing damage. Venthyr the same thing; it does damage and it puts a, an absorb shield that absorbs damage. Uh, disc priest double dips off of that. Holy priest just gets the absorb shield. Uh, same thing with Necrolord. Uh, and then and then you have Night Fae, which just is not a very interesting covenant. It doesn't really give a ton of throughput anyway. So uh, Holy Priest doesn't have compelling covenant options. It doesn't have compelling legendary options. doesn't have compelling conduit options. It just kind of does healing, and it's a very neglected healer right now. So um, it may well do more HPS than like a Paladin, but a, a Paladin can get fixed with some tuning passes, and a Holy Priest uh, needs like developer attention really it, it's just it's too far down uh in terms of not really benefiting from any of the major game systems for, in this expansion so far so unfortunate for holy priest well that's it for me i won't plug my twitch channel or anything just uh don't ever watch naysam Thank you so much for watching this video and let us know in the comment section below what do you think about each of these specs, uh, where Shampi rank them, do you think they belong in a higher or lower tier and what's your reasoning behind it. And if you'd like to check out Shampi's channel, his Twitch and his Twitter will be linked in the description box and in the comments so make sure to go over to his channel if you enjoy some healer content because he's definitely a guy to keep an eye on, he knows what he's talking about. Again thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.